All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I apologize for the uh, countdown timer uh, mix up just now. I tried to be very well prepared and have several timers lined up. And of course, I shared the wrong one. So um, thanks for those who pointed it out. And yes, there's been several questions about whether these are recorded. They will be recorded and uh, will be shared after the event with the slides as well. Um, so next on the agenda, we have uh, today sharing with us the uh, importance of testing in Ansible collections. When you uh, write or contribute to an Ansible collection, testing is really important. So he will give some um, details and also a demo of how to do it. By the way, this session is pre-recorded, so today is actually available to answer questions as uh, the uh, video is playing. So feel free to drop in your questions and uh, continue using the Q&A feature for that. All right, let's watch the video. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Tadej and I'll talk about the importance of testing in Ansible collections. But before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm a member of a XLab Steampunk team that primarily focuses on all things automation, from bare metal provisioning to resource orchestration. I maintain a few Ansible collections, one of them is certified, and all, I'm also a maintainer for a few other automation related uh, projects on GitHub. So hopefully this makes me qualified enough to talk about Ansible collection testing. Today's plan is fairly simple. We will add two new modules to the SensorGo Ansible collection. But instead of focusing on the code itself, we'll primarily look at the tests and how they influence the code structure. And we just came across the most important takeaway of today's presentation, the why behind the tests. If you use tests to detect errors or catch bugs in your existing code, you're basically doing it wrong. A high quality test suits prevent bugs from entering our code base in, uh, in the first place and make sure we do, uh, do not break the backward compatibility when modifying code. And we do not even have to write the tests to benefit from that. Just thinking about how we would go testing a certain piece of code makes us structure that code better. So if you only remember one thing from today's presentation, this should be it. With all that behind us, we can now actually start writing our SensorGo Ansible modules. So I'll start sharing my screen now but I'll leave my webcam on so you can see my face when things eventually go wrong. Okay, so we'll start by writing an integration test. Why? Because we want to make sure our newly created modules will not be too painful to use. And there is no better way to test the usability of the modules API than to write a playbook using it. So we'll start with our integration tests, and this is how they basically look. Integration tests help us determine the scope of the work we intend to do. So because we will be adding customer requirements into the test suite, we are done with our work when the integration tests are all green. In our case, the requirements are we want to basically be able to add new secret to SensorGo backend, delete that secret from SensorGo backend, update that secret, and uh, list all available secrets on the backend. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as a typical integration test playbook, but there are a few things that we should only check. For, check, for example, making sure that our check mode works and like uh, other things like that. So let's just start with the integration tests for our module. So we'll be basically looking at pairs of tasks. So one task ex actually executes one of the modules we wrote, and then we have an assertion that follows it and makes sure the result fits the definition or limitations that we specify. So 
we start with making sure that we have a clean slate, so no secrets on the back end, and this makes sure that our secret info module works when there are no secrets on the back end. Then we actually fake creating a new secret, so we run that in check mode. So this is how you uh, enable check mode in your playbook, and then assert that Ansible says that yes, yeah, something would change change if we were actually doing something. And the next thing is we go to the backend, ask for the secrets and assert that nothing actually changed. So this makes sure that our check mode is actually doing what it should. So it just reports what it would do if the check mode was not enabled. And then we go and actually create a new secret. The, we just ensure that the result, the result that we get back has all the variables set as intended. And then again, we use the secret info module to fetch all the secrets from the backend and then make sure all the data is as it should be. And lastly, we try to create new secret using the same parameters again and make sure the result report as okay so that our module correctly detected that no change is needed and just returned okay. And then we follow with another of our customer uh, requests, so we need to be able to update existing secret. And we basically follow the same pattern as we did with the creation of the secret. We first try to update the existing secret, but we do it in check mode, so if things work correctly, the existing secret did not change. So we see we actually set ID to my new R, but in our assertion, we test that it still has the old value. Then we actually go and update the secret, and we see that now when we fetch the secrets from the backend, they contain an updated values. And as before, we try to update secret once again using the same parameters as before and just make sure that the result returns back OK. Then we create another secret, but this secret does not have any meaning besides we want to just make sure our secret info module can return more than one secret back. And the last thing we have to, uh, have to do is delete the secret. And again, follow the same procedure as before. We first fake deletion, make sure nothing changed because we were running in check mode. Then we actually execute deletion and ensure that the thing we requested to be deleted is not present anymore and not just some other secret. And lastly, again, delete it something that does not exist and Ansible should just return or our module should just return. It's okay, there's nothing to do, so all green. And that is basically it. So if you run this test now, if you run the test, the test will probably fail or it should fail because we haven't uh, started writing code yet. You may have noticed that we use Molecule to run our integration test because we need to ensure compatibility against five different SensorGo, uh, SensorGo versions. And while we could use Ansible test to achieve the same result, using Molecule makes it much more comfortable. Okay, so now our module, our integration test uh, stopped executing and as we expected, Ansible could not find our secret info module. Um, so all good for now. I'll just quickly show you our molecule configuration file so you see how easy it is to test your modules against different platforms. So here we have a list of all the platforms and as you see, all we have to do is create a Docker image with the proper sensor go version and then we can use it in molecule easy and fast as i said we could use ansible test integration but we prefer to use molecule because we can use different platforms tested at once and it also help us test our roles that contain that are contained in the collection 
Okay, but one thing we did not test using the playbook is the parameter validation. And while it is certainly possible to test this using integration tests, it is often more comfortable and faster to use unit tests. But we'll talk about unit tests and testing uh, arguments a bit later. So now that we have our integration test in place and know what we need to implement, we can actually start writing code. And the first thing we need to write is documentation and argument specification. But let me just first check out the right code because writing the code live is not something that I would like to do. Okay, so here you have our secret module. Uh, and what we are looking at at the top part of the editor is the documentation. So documentation for uh, module parameters. And in, in the lower part of the editor, we have uh, uh, actual implementation. And what we are interested in is this argument specification. We learned the hard way that we should always write documentation and argument specification in a lockstep fashion. So first we should add a module parameter to the documentation. For example, we add provider here, and then we should add the same parameter to the argument specification. So this means we add new entry in the dictionary here, and then we must run the sanity test. So run sanity tests like this. Um, so we run it only on Python 3.8 and we only run single sanity test that is validate modules. Um, I did run the sanity test this way to uh, shorten the time it takes to get through the sanity test while still catching most of the issues early on. Once we have all our modules in, all our functionality in, we should run uh, sanity tests um, without the test specifications, so we run them all. Uh, in our continuous integration pipeline, we also test on all supported Python versions, but because I'm using my work machine here, I'll only use Python 3.8. Now you might be wondering, why is such importance of this lockstep? So why we should add one parameter at a time? Well, let me just delete for example, this ID argument. Yes, and we run the tests. As we see, our documentation and argument specification is only slightly out of sync. So just one module is missing, and already we are faced with quite a lot of errors in the console. Now multiply this with five or ten module, uh, ten parameters, and you see that things quickly become overwhelming, and there is nothing you can do. So do step, do things one step at a time, and keep your uh, sanity. Um, an alternative way of running sanity tests, so we are basically running them here on uh, my local machine, is to run them in a Docker container. And this is probably how you would run sanity tests if you were trying to contribute some of your code to the community collections, such as uh, community general. But as you can see, our collection does not actually pass the sanity tests in the Docker container because our collection does not support Python 2.6. So this is just something you may need to think about if you want to use the dockerized version of uh, sanity tests. Okay, so I'll let the sanity tests uh, run in the background while we talk about another thing. So we added our parameters, so now we should start testing the correctness of our argument specification. And I can already hear you yelling, but today we just added the same information on two places already. We have this information about parameters in documentation. We have them in the argument specification. And now you want us to add it to the third place. And the answer is yes, I want to add them to the third place. And we'll do this because this unit test that we will write 
will be the guardians of our backward compatibility. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, first we'll talk, open the test file and we'll go through it. So unit testing, the argument parsing is a bit tricky because the input data usually comes to the module via the standard input. But with some utility classes such as uh, Ansible exit JSON, Ansible fail JSON, module test case set module arcs, we can sweep the majority of the ugliness under the rug and write semi-readable uh, tests. Um, so for example, set module arc just means when the main method is running, please add parameters as they would be passed uh, via the standard input. Um, so let's go through our checks and see why we have them here and what consequences they have on our code. So the first test that we have here is test minimal parameters. So each module usually have a set or multiple sets of uh, parameters that needs to be set when executing. And this test minim minimal parameter set help us ensure that if we add another required argument to our set, these tests will fail and we will be notified that we broke the backward compatibility. What basically means is if we add another requirement or another required uh, module parameter, we need to create or release new major version of our Ansible collection. And the same thing goes for test all parameters. So in this case, we'll, we execute our module with all the parameters that it, it can receive. So this test will catch if we accidentally remove or rename, rename an existing parameter and again breaking backwards compatibility. So these are the two tests that make sure our backwards compatibility hold. And then we have a third test that uh, is just basically testing if our conditional logic for argument uh, values is correct. So if you look at our modules uh, from before, we see that we have required if statement here, which says if the state is set to present, provider and ID uh, are required arguments. And this is basically what we are testing here. So we, if you remove provider or ID, our Ansible module should fail with exit JSON and report what is wrong. And the last, uh, the last check here, just to make sure that any known exceptions or any known errors are reported nicely to the end user so that we don't get any bug reports for ugly output. Okay, but there is, Oh, besides making sure our modules keep their backwards compatibility and that our code is, um, so to say, functions as specified by the customer, you also noticed that we only mocked a single method in all our tests. So we only mocked sync v1 uh, method from the module. And this is not a coincidence. We actually structured our main method in such a way that we minimize the need for mocking. And in return, we now have a nicely decoupled piece of functionality in our code. Um, so basically, because it was hard to write tests for certain functionality, we simplified the code to make testing it easier. Okay, so now that our, our tests are here, we can actually run them. Again, I'm running this only on Python 3.8 on my local machine. Again, in our continuous integration process, we run this on all supported Python versions. Okay, so we see our collections has uh, a little more than 400 tests and we executed them in five, six seconds. If we were to execute, but not all, maybe just the test that check the module, uh, module parameter validation using the uni, uh, integration test, it will take minutes or 10 minutes to uh, run through those tests. And here we have in a few seconds, uh, almost 500 modules. 
This allows us to test many, many more combinations of parameters as we would be able to test if we were using integration tests. Now, um, about those helper function functions, these are all basically copied from the official Ansible docs. So just search for testing, unit testing Ansible modules and definitions for all those helpers are there. Okay, so when all the tests are green, such as in our, uh, in our case, um, we can start adding business logic to our secret module. In our case, there is little business logic in the module because we are adding content to a mature Ansible collection that has most of the utility methods that we need already defined. So if we have a look at what actually happens in our main method, so you see we create client with some helper method, we build path with some helper method, we build payload with some helper method, and then we actually enforce the state on the backend using some helper method. And of course, all those helper methods um, are tested, so maybe you can check one of those out. So for example, this is how the tests or unit tests for our helper methods look like. Um, you may notice that they are really, really simple. And again, this is the consequence of the fact that we wrote the tests and code at the same time. This basically means that most of our helper methods are pure, so they have no side effects and testing them is as easy as sending them some data and then checking what data comes out. Okay, so because our business logic is, I lost the business logic, so um, let's forget about it for now. Anyway, basically when our tests are green, our unit tests are green, we mean we can actually start, uh, restart running our integration test. So before our integration test was read because our sensor go secret info module was missing, but if we did not mess things horribly, things should, should look much greener now. Okay, so let's just see what happens when we reach the point of no return or when we st actually start executing a, a something on the back end. Right now we are still creating uh, Docker instances and now the action begins. Also, we, we started to see something green, so things should be okay. And while the tests are running, I'll just show you how our continuous integration setup or pipeline looks, uh, because I was talking quite a lot about it. So these are all the tests that we execute on every push or on every pull request or on every commit to master. So we execute unit tests, we execute sanity tests, and we execute integration tests. And we execute unit tests on Ansible 2.9 and Ansible 2.10, and on all supported Python versions. And in our case, this is 2.7, 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. The same things, uh, thing holds for sanity tests, so we test on all combinations of Ansible version and Python version. And we run, also run our integration test on Ansible 2.9 and on the Ansible 2.10. Okay, so let me just see if our test finished. So, and return value is zero, so everything is green. So we are all ready to go. Okay, so now I can stop sharing screen and say, Goodbye to you. So this is it. We made it through. We added two new modules to Sensugo Ansible collection. We checked how tests um, make sure that our collection is healthy now and will stay healthy in the future. So thank you so much for sticking to the end. I hope you learned a thing or two. So stay safe and goodbye. All right. Thanks for the great presentation. And I see there's already been some questions and Tade has been uh, busy answering them as well. 
great comments that the presentation is very helpful. Thank you. Link to the PR that contains the code from the presentation is in the chat. I think there's a question. Can anyone give us the demo GitHub to understand better about Ansible test process like the presentation showed us? Uh, you mean like a demo repo? We tried to, for you to try things out. So thanks, Tadeh, for answering. Testing is not strictly related to GitHub. Usually tests are executed in CI/CD, but you usually start testing on your own local machine. The molecules documentation for some quick start examples, and I think the molecule documentation link is in the chat. And also for mock third-party APIs for Ansible modules, integrate with there's some answers also in the Q&A please feel free to check them out by the way some are having frustrations over the uh, Q&A they are not able to see the answers because it's hard to search we will also share the Q&A um, transcript after the event. So you get the list of questions and answers to the um, to be able to, you know, get, get the URLs, get the uh, answers uh, available to you. Okay, the link to join the event. Let me get it for you really quick. I've put it in chat, the registration link. You, you should be able to still register and join because we still have quite a bit of the event to go. Please, uh, Paul, uh, you, you can use the link. Thank you. All right. In about 15, 13 minutes, uh, Gandalo will uh, start share this Catacoda session, which goes in the very um, kind of introduction of how to do some of the testing, which was uh, touched upon. So and you get to try it, try it out for yourself, a little bit of hands-on as well. So we look forward to that. Gondolo, are you around? Yep. I'm thinking since we have a bit of time before we start the next session, and a few more people have joined uh, as presenters, shall we do a short round of intro, another round? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Likewise, I'm happy to share the the Katakoda links because it's sort of self-service. Right. It's up to you because the time is yours <laughs> for this session, for this period. Hi, everyone. Um, so one thing we've been talking a bit around um, in the community generally, and I think sort of today makes it clear, is some different ways that we can do training for people. Um, so to that end, we've been playing around with Katakoda. I've just shared the link and it's also on the screen. So bit.ly.com slash Ansible 
training, one word. Um, so this is a sort of interactive training scenario. Um, Cutcoder, which is owned by O'Reilly, gives you the ability to spin up a virtual environment. In this case, I believe it's Ubuntu 18.04. To install Ansible Base, um, do some testing, run Ansible test, um, see how things work. So very similar to what you saw in the, the last example, one of the nice things about this is all running in a virtual machine. Um, so there's no way of you sort of messing up your, your local system. Um, so if people want to have a look at that, you click in, you can sign in with uh, GitHub or uh, another method. Uh, have a look through it. Basically, you can click all of the commands that appear. Um, and read through the descriptions, go on from one step to the next. Um, once you've done it, please do give us some feedback or some, you know, you can rate us, give us some stars on the uh, Katakoda itself. And also on the screen, there's a link to bit.ly.com, sorry, bit.ly plus Ansible training feedback. Um, to give us some discussion, uh, some feedback there. What other type of training could we do to help this, uh, to help you? Uh, there's a lot of people that are new contributing to Ansible, so it's a uh, really important to us that we get some feedback. Um, also, you feel free to use the online chat. Yeah, I, I hope it works for people. Thanks. So for those who may have just joined, because we are, this is supposed to be the time that we start the Catacoda scenario, um, just take a look at the uh, URL on the um, screen, the Catacoda Training Online Lab, bit.ly slash Ansible Training is case sensitive. And uh, try out the scenario, it's self-paced and uh, you can take your time. We have uh, quite a bit of time as well as a break following this. So there's no rush. And if you have questions, we're still here on chat and Q&A. Hi everyone, so I can see that um, a few people have been able to complete the scenario, that's brilliant. Um, so for those just uh, joining back, there's two links on the screen at the moment. We've been looking at different ways to try and help with the learning curve regarding contributing to Ansible in particular around collections. Um, we realize this is, a, even if you're used to contributing to Ansible before, that this is a, a pretty big change. Um, that I end in some of the community meetings recently, we've been talking about different ways that we can try and help people uh, get over that learning curve, or maybe people that are brand new to contributing to Ansible. So we put together this sort of a Katakoda online training lab. So it's a nice safe way of you sort of playing around um, with a few little scenarios with Ansible uh, contributing, using Ansible test and um, being able to hopefully fix fix some problems and understand what Ansible test is and how to check out the code properly. Um, this is brand new. Um, I think only one or two people have, have looked at this before. I um, would really welcome your feedback. Critical feedback is a really important thing of, of the Ansible community. Um, if anything wasn't clear, so what we'd like to know is what wasn't clear, how we can improve this, what are the scenarios, um, we think it'd be useful. We've got a the second link there, bit.ly uh, slash Ansible training feedback. Um, that'll give you the place to, to give some feedback. Otherwise, feel free just to put stuff in the uh, Blue Jeans chat. Um, yeah, I hope it's been useful, but uh, please give us some feedback. We'd like to um, do some more with this, um, but we, we don't know what to do unless we, we get your feedback. So thank you.
Owen, maybe to to make this a bit more interesting um, for people that give um, good feedback on the on the second link, we'll um, dig out some nice uh, swag, some extra swag to send people. Um, maybe that will encourage a bit more bit more feedback. So yeah, if on the the second link, so Bitly Ansible training feedback. Um, um, by the end of, of Friday, so you've got a week to give some more feedback. I'll I randomly select a few people on there that have given some good quality feedback um, to find some. Uh, we'll get some special swag sent over to you. Thank you. Hi Joel, I just see your your comment in in chat. Um, up until last week, um, when I've been playing around with this Catacoda session, I, I myself used used Vim um, inside there, so that should work. Um, though I think it was yesterday, I uh, Catacoda has this sort of editor built in, um, which you can use, um, um, which I hope works well. One one thing I'd be really interested in, in feedback, and please give this in the online chat is. When I first used the editor, it wasn't clear that you need to close the file to, to save it. So um, any sort of usability feedback on the Catacoda itself, as well as the uh, specific scenario we've got there, would be really useful. All right, so um, for now we have a longer break. It's for one hour and 15 minutes. Um, partly because uh, some of us, like it's dinner time at in Finland right now, and I'm sure some of you breakfast or lunch or something. So um, feel free, the, the, the session is still ongoing. The um, scenarios are online. You can do it now, later, come back to it again another time. So feel free to bookmark bookmark those and um, yeah uh, I'll probably switch off my video for a while while, while I get some food but I'll be still in, uh, I think many of us will still be in front of the uh, computer with so if you have questions chat continue, please continue to, to, to do so and also take a break yourselves uh, get, get some uh, food refreshments and uh, we'll see you back um, in uh, with the uh, program, we still have three sessions after the, after the longer break. So see you back in one hour, 15 minutes. I will leave the Catacoda links up so you can still access them and do it at your own pace. But um, again, feel free to chat and we'll come back again soon. Thanks. <laughs>